and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to create text that looks similar to this. Uh, we're going to use the same. Te I'm going to use the same text, Blender know-how, because that's the logo that I have created. But you can substitute this out for any text, as it is all the same. You just follow the same steps, and we'll make them these same colors, and you can change the colors to whatever color you would like. So. Well, let's get started. So I'm gonna open up uh, Blender and get out of the splash screen when it comes up. I'm gonna turn on my screencast key. So on the bottom left corner right here, you can see that uh, when I hit the end button, it will get rid of that uh, panel over here. Uh, I clicked over down in the bottom corner, but if I hit Shift S, I can bring that cursor that I clicked down there back into the center. Uh, first I'm going to delete the cube that I've got and I'm going to hit shift A and because we're working with text I'm going to hit text. Hit 7 to go to the top view on your, numcat, no, on your numpad and then hit tab to edit the text. I'm going to erase text and I'm going to type in blender know how. And then I'm also going to tab back out of that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see it pretty easily. And I'm going to hit the 3 button. That brings me to the side view. And I'm going to hit R for rotate. Hit 90. And because it is facing downwards, I want to hit the negative. So it's facing upwards. So you can just hit the, the subtract button or the negative button, whatever you want to call it. And hit enter. Hit the 1 button. And that is your front. 7 is your top and it is now flat there. Uh, leave it, go to the top view by hitting 7 and go to your font settings. We're going to extrude this um, just a hair and uh, we, want it, we want it to have some depth so you, I'm just navigating with the orbit button but I might want to make it a little more thicker than that. I think it looks pretty decent. Um, next, let's, hmm, we need to hit sh shift D, and then it makes a duplicate, just right click, with the right click, make sure it's right, and it'll put it in the same spot as your other one. Now, let's, uh, let's increase the offset a little bit. Uh, probably point zero 0.01 and then decrease the extrude just a hair and that almost gives it like a, a small there's just a difference this one's a little bit wider or larger uh, wider and taller but the depth isn't as big and this one's the depth is bigger and it's smaller in all the other dimensions which is what we want because uh, if we go back to something like this this is just the rendered view see I can navigate around it if we go to this we have a color here and then we also have a color here that's what we're creating in this so let's right click and make sure that you're selected the inside one and go to material click new and actually delete that don't hit that yet we're gonna go to cycles because this is gonna be in cycles I found that cycles render engine is very well top-notch so hit the new and I used emission on this and it looks I think it looks pretty cool pretty good uh, and because I stuck with the same colors as this logo right here you can actually just click right here on the color and take this and the inside is orange so I'm gonna get as close to the orange as I can and it makes it orange there uh, when you change your viewport shading to rendered it doesn't quite look the same that's okay because 
it, it's going to vary a little bit. You can't really zoom up that much. If you would like to, you can create a new panel over here by holding down on that button dragging and go to UV image editor and open an image and I think I should have a, an image in here of just one minute I do have one somewhere and I will include it in the the description so if you would like to you can download that so I know I have one just one second here let me try going to pictures okay I'm going to pause the tutorial for a minute and then I'll come right back okay I'm back and I have now found the logo um, so it's on my desktop but I'm gonna put it in the Blunter tutorials folder so alrighty so now when I come Now when I come over here, I'll hit refresh. There we go. I'm going to use the Splendor logo you got right here. I can do the same thing with this and get the exact color. And that'll make it pretty nice. If you if you want the same exact color, you can do this with any picture too. And then I'm going to right click on the, the other one and hit new. And then I want this one to be blue. Oh, I forgot to change this to emission but you shouldn't have to change the color if you want to you can but it won't really do much uh... it doesn't really look uh... really wow yet and that's because the wow comes in when we do this hit shift a mesh plane and make it use the s button to scale it and center it you can hit the one button and hit Z. That'll put in your wireframe mode. And you can see your objects uh, more clearly. I don't know if that's the word I want. Because it's not really clear. But you can see where they are uh, in just a simple way, which is really nice. And then also can hit Shift D and then see it'll duplicate it. Right click, hit rotate 90 degrees and enter and I'm going to middle mouse button until I'm right in front of it I'm going to change the view to solid just so I can see what's going on and this plane will probably be cutting your text in half which isn't what we want again so if you hit the 3 on your numpad and zoom in you can see this is right here splitting the text in half let's just hit the G button grab it middle mouse button to move it on one axis and put it right behind it. So now uh, let's take our camera and put a cool perspective view on this. I'm gonna hit R twice and it'll orbit. And then hit the G button to grab it and move it. If you hit G and middle mouse button, it'll zoom up and down like this. I'm gonna hit the R button twice again and look up. Uh, G rotate down just till I can see my whole text and then let's change this to rendered it looks pretty cool but it's not quite the results I had before so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this background over here the back the black plane that we or the back plane that we uh, put behind this Let's create a new texture for it, and this one's going to be glossy. And now it just almost as a mirror. We don't want that. So let's increase the roughness. And uh, let me check to see what we got for the roughness on this other one. Because it turned out pretty good, I thought. Um, I 
a roughness of 0.17. And this bottom one, we want to do the same. And we put a roughness of 0.2, oh wait, 6, oh, we'll do that, 0.26. And we'll hope that it just keeps it when we change it to glossy. So we're going to also change that one, and it did, so that worked out good. Our next step is this bottom one, I put uh, orange tint to it, the same orange as this, and it gives it gives it more, it shows up the orange more clearly in it. And this back one, so, oh, I think I did that backwards. I want this bottom one. I want this bottom one to be the orange one. So let's change this to orange. We'll change this back one to the blue. And let's see the blue one. Yep, that's perfect. Now let's hit the zero. And voila. We have a nice looking logo. Uh, I think that looks pretty close to the same one we got on my other one. I think the only difference is I th think this one was probably a brighter orange or something. But this w it stayed pretty true to the actual logo colors this way. Oh, this is why. Uh, we want to right click on the orange one. And let's so see if we can change the orange to a strength of four. And that almost looks yellow. So, uh, can we darken this? Hmm. So. We may want to just decrease the strength of this. So it looks a little bit fake. So let's try the blue one. Let's see what kind of effect we can get with the blue one if we change it to a four. Okay, the one that it, it increased the brightness on that one, but it, I think it still looks pretty good. Uh, and it gives it a nice orange and blue look. That is our Blender know-how tutorial. If you would like to uh, change uh, your dimensions, your resolution right here, the main thing you probably want to change is this right here, and you can change it to 100%. So when you hit F12, your computer will render it at a very high quality. And also, you want to change samples down here to probably at least 500 if you're doing this for uh, something professionally done. Or uh, for my project, I did 500, as it looks pretty good. Uh, what if you get lower numbers? They just don't look quite. They look grainier. So the higher the number, the less grainy they look, but the longer it takes to render. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And if I were to hit F12, it will now take a long time to render. But we're going to zoom out here. And you can see the graininess disappears as it renders. And it looks really good. So, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope to see you next time.